What is up everyone, it's Sir Deathvids. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can cast your own miniatures for Warhammer or D&D. Before this video starts, please keep in mind that Games Workshop has a policy in place against duplicating or imitating their miniatures, so be responsible with this. This started out as a crazy experiment and it became something else entirely. I thought this was my own idea, but I'd also like to shout out Roll for Damage for thinking of this too back in October 2017. To start, Take whatever miniature you want to cast and use a brush to apply vegetable oil to it. You want to coat all the surfaces of this model. Pam could also be used, but the bubbles might wreck your mold and I've experienced this, so use just plain vegetable oil instead of aerosol spray Pam. I'm using an extra orc arm for this process, but I'm going to get it out later anyways, so it doesn't really matter. Next, I set that on a peeled piece of foam board, warmed up my hot glue gun, and just piled it on top until the arm was completely covered. I then soaked it in a sink full of cold water to speed up the hardening process. This is how it's looking so far. It looks like a piece of plastic in hot glue. After that, I peeled off the foam board and coated the flat surface with more oil and then hot glue to make a makeshift two-part mold. Two-part molds are very difficult to make and this one was just experimental. There's probably a way better way to do this, so if you figure that out, leave that in the comments below. After it dried, I peeled the two halves apart and bent the mold around until I could get out the orc arm. The removal process can break brittle pieces like small spikes on helmets, so I would be cautious of what parts you try to duplicate with this method. This is what we are going to be working with, an empty cavity that can be filled with hot glue and put together to make another arm. The next step of the process is to coat the mold in oil and fill it up with hot glue to create the positive from the negative. This one is the HeroQuest Tomb, which actually takes a considerable amount of hot glue to fill. I used the foam board to save me some time and glue, but I should have watched to make sure that all pockets of the mold were filled first. After cooling this off for a few minutes, I simply peeled off the mold from the tomb. It makes a lovely cracking sound when I do it. And there's the tomb! I noticed the air bubbles and just inserted it back into the mold and filled those with a little more hot glue. After peeling it out once more, we are left with a completed tomb piece. Here it is beside the original, and this ugly one was the first attempt with the paint job of a six-year-old miniature painter. That's how bad it is. I'm in the process of editing right now, but what I did with that first tomb is I stripped it and I repainted it. And now it looks way better, I also put it on a base, and also I put the actual hot glue piece on some cardboard. And now it looks like a full tomb terrain piece, and I didn't even have to waste my plastic one. Alright, back to the rest of the video. If you have some excess hot glue on your piece, then just use some plastic cutters or a knife to remove that. You can see that with this orc head that I'm doing, even though for you it just looks like a transparent blob. With the tomb, as you can see, it can fit over the cardboard like the original one, and the bottom piece can easily be remade with cardboard and a printer. Before painting these, make sure to wash them with soap and water to remove any residual oil. Now here are a few others that I've done. The first is an orc head. The second is a skull from the Citadel Skulls box, but these skulls are so cheap that it was probably a waste of hot glue. Like you can get, I think, 340 in that pack for 10 to 20 bucks, so yeah, they're really cheap. Here's the duplicated version of that skull, and the black paint is on there to show you that there are some details instead of it looking entirely transparent. This one was my first ever piece, which was the corner of the tomb. This would work perfectly for some debris scatter terrain, which if you want to see, also leave that in the comments below. This was the first attempt with that orc head, and this was the second one, but the paint job doesn't do it any justice either. This is how the orc arm turned out. It's not perfect, but it's good enough for terrain. The only bad thing is that I had to completely obliterate the mold just to get it out due to the shape of the arm. The arm itself is fine, but the gun looks a little bit squished, and the magazine didn't get filled with glue. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the pieces. And I did the same comparison with the plastic tube and the primed hot glue tube. I discovered that they were pretty close, and if painted properly, most people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Here's a comparison of the first versus second attempts, and the main difference is that I kept my hot glue gun plugged in the whole time. On the first one, I was worried that the new glue would remelt the old stuff, and so I unplugged the glue gun before I finished. I also did a rib cage shield, and head from my Skeleton Warriors box. This is the head where the spikes snapped off, and you can start to see the limitations of using this method. Now it's time to discuss the pros and cons of this. First for the pros, 
it's incredibly cheap. The Hero Quest Tomb is at least $5 plus shipping on eBay, and you can pick up a pack of 24 glue sticks for about $5 as well. If it takes you on average 3 sticks to make both the negative and positive, then you could make 8 tombs for the price of 1 if you already bought one to make the mold of first. All these hot glue things are perfect for terrain and debris piles, and you don't waste your actual good bits. They can be used as practice for painting if you don't want to mess up any of your other miniatures, and if you need extra parts, they can also be used for that as well. The process is really quick and simple. You can make a new part just starting from the normal plastic one in less than 30 minutes. And now for the cons. There's a risk of melting the mold and just having a huge pile of melted glue, and then everything was a waste. There's a definite loss of quality, which could primarily be seen on the skull with the helmet and the slugga. It's quite difficult for the hot glue to penetrate the fine details, like horns before it hardens, which is why the orc and skeleton heads were missing those. It's not possible to cast all parts, especially if they are flimsy or brittle. There's a risk of snapping your miniature in the removal process or getting it trapped in a puddle of glue. That happens if you try making a two-part mold and you don't wait long enough. And two-part molds are quite difficult to make and sometimes separate. There are some pros and some cons, but if you need to quickly duplicate some parts for cheap, then this is what I would recommend doing. Make sure to tune in for a future video where I show how to make a Citadel water pot for free. New videos are going to be coming soon, but I have a math exam to study for first. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe because that really helps me out. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!